I want to talk today a little bit about how to optimize your WordPress site with analytics and testing. And this is going to be kind of a two-part presentation. We're going to talk about specific plugins and specific tools that I have found work well or that have been recommended. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the strategies around site optimization and testing so that we get a little bit of the tactical how and a little bit more of the strategic why. And let me know if you want more tactical or more strategic, because i got a lot of slides. <laughs> so first of all, what exactly is optimization? We can be really, really geeky here, and we can talk about how it's the use of SEO and testing tools and web analytics to increase the conversion rates of landing pages and blah, 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 blah. The actual reality is it's making sure your site meets your business goals. Well, who here is with a for-profit entity? And who here is with a non-profit? Who here is with a for-profit but you're just not making any profits? <laughs> <laughs> but regardless of whether you're there to make money not, or change the world, save animals, save the whales, or sell software, your site has business goals. You want to do something. You want to sign up volunteers. You want to sell things via e-commerce. You want to get leads. Those are the goals of your site, the business goals of your site. And optimization uses data to make sure you're meeting the goals of that site. And it is very, very important that it uses data because optimization without data is just messing with your site. You know, if you're going to optimize things without any kind of data, you're going to just make it look prettier or this or that, that's not optimization so much as it's being a bit of a hobbyist. You can optimize for just about anything. Again, it doesn't matter what your goals are. You can get more visitors. You can optimize for usability by making your site easier to navigate, which is, again, going to help you meet your business goals of getting people to take the actions that you want on your site. You can optimize directly for the bottom line, and in fact, you should, of getting more people to buy, more people to donate or sign up for your newsletters. You can optimize for social goals, like getting more people to be engaged with your community via blog posts or community posts. And you can even optimize for making your site so terrible it scares people away, in honor of the Halloween theme I just but the number one thing you do when you start optimizing your site, before you've set out to talk about any kind of plugins, look at your Google Analytics, use any kind of tools at all, is you develop your goals. We had a show of hands who's here to make a profit, who's here to help people, who's here to make a profit but isn't any, making any. But regardless of why your site exists, you have to develop concrete, manageable, manageable in this quarter goals for your site so that you know what you're optimizing. Whether you think your site has a usability issue, who here thinks your site maybe could be better, to, easier to navigate? Who here thinks your site could look aesthetically more modern or nicer or just be less ugly? <laughs> who here thinks that you could get more high converting traffic versus more people who just bounce? Those are all your goals. Really concrete, specific things. I want my site to be easier to navigate. I want it to get more high converting traffic. I want it to look prettier. Those are the goals that you set for your site before you start optimizing. And then the next thing you are going to do is you're going to create KPIs or key performance indicators. If you have a boss, they love, 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 if you're in a corporate environment, for you to have an acronym for whatever you're doing. <laughs> If you're in a cool startup or a nonprofit and you go running around with acronyms, they'll just look at you like, Christina, what happened to you? Why are you talking in acronyms? So you can drop that and actually use plain English and say key performance indicators, but I've given you an acronym if you need it to justify your existence. <laughs> We've all been there. A key performance indicator or a KPI, which we'll have a subcommittee meeting tomorrow, um, is simply the number that lets you know you're succeeding. So if your site is easier to navigate, one way of measuring that with a number, and at the end of the day, no matter how aesthetic your goals or culturally your goals or nonprofit related your goals, you still have to attach a number to how you're going to measure it because that's how we know it's working in site optimization. It's going to be the number that tells you it's working. If your site becomes more usable, for instance, maybe fewer people are going to use site search because they're going to find what they want without using site search. So you could set your KPI to be, I want to see a 20% drop in the number of people who are using site search. 
and it's usually good to set a deadline for that. In three months' time, I want the site to be optimized for navigation so that I have a 20% drop in people using the site search. Set a number that will tell you that it's working. If you're optimizing to make money, guess what your KPI is? You're making more money. It's really, really simple. But if you're optimizing for something else, you have to decide what the number is that's the shorthand or KPI for what you're doing. It could also just be your source of traffic, for instance. Let's say I want more of our alliance partners for my nonprofit to actually be driving volunteers to our site. Well, that would be we want referral traffic to lead people to spend X amount of time on the volunteer page or fill out the volunteer form. That would be the KPI for that. So, does anyone have any questions on like what a KPI would be? Okay. So now that we've set out what you're going to optimize for and how you're going to know it's working, now we get to play with the fun stuff, which is the plugins. There are thousands of them out there for every possible need. There are split testing ones, there are SEO packages that are really good for optimization, there are analytics tools, you probably only need Google Analytics those, of those as well. There's heat mapping tools, who here knows what heat mapping tool is? Cool. So for those of you who don't, it's a tool that basically allows you to see which parts of your site are getting the most interest from people, where they're hovering their mouse, where they're clicking. And it shows it as a heat map where the most engaging parts of the site are shown as hot or red, and the others are shown as blue. So it's really good as a usability tool. There's dozens of them. There's tools that will tell you which of two potential pages gets more sales or more people sign up as volunteers. There's tools that will tell you whether your SEO is working. There's tools that will allow you to test two completely different themes for your website. Literally, you can split your traffic and have one group of visitors see a completely different theme from the other. You name it, if you want to test it or optimize for it, there's the tool out there. Number one, the core tool for any, um, any kind of optimization, and you should probably guess that from the title, is going to be Google Analytics. Um, who here isn't using Google Analytics? Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad that the rest of you are. Who here is totally satisfied with how you're using Google Analytics? Like, there you feel like this, sir. 90% <laughs> of us really are just skimming the surface. Google Analytics is the most incredibly powerful tool that we are being given for free. Um, and we really need to figure out the way to use it best. It's very hard, though, because most people just start on the few screens that tell you what your bounce rate is, how many people are visiting your site in aggregate, and you're not using it to answer the hard questions. The reality is, all, is that although there's a lot of great testing tools out there, and even though the title of this presentation is Optimizing Through Analytics and Testing, a lot of the things you think you need to test, you don't, because the answer already is in your Google Analytics. You can answer questions like, does a mention in a niche trade pub do us more good than a write-up in the Boston Globe? What's the best day really to send an email based on how many people buy? Did the paid search campaign coupled with a white paper lead to more sales? Do people who visit at night buy more often than those in the daytime? And do they buy even more if we encourage them to drink martinis? And the ultimate question for which there is always no good answer should we spend more time on Google Plus? <laughs> So really, you can answer all these questions by looking at your Google Analytics, and we'll do a quick case study as to how I answered some really great questions for EdTrips based on Google Analytics. But you're going to need to start out with a Google, a Google Analytics plugin that is a basic part of every site. You can't, just don't, you know, don't live without it, don't fail to populate it. Get the simplest and lightest one you can use, though, because it, first of all, comes often as part of some SEO plugin, so you won't need a separate Google Analytics plugin all in one SEO pack or something like that. You may already have your analytics in there. Um, and don't get any of the fancy ones that allow you to access your Google Analytics from within your WordPress or do all kinds of fancy stuff. They're heavy. They're one more thing to manage, and they don't necessarily give you anything that Google Analytics itself, if you're using it right, won't. 
next thing you're really going to need is some kind of SEO plugin. Again, a lot of these already have Google Analytics as part of it, but you will also need an SEO plugin itself because SEO is really core to site optimization. You're not doing site optimization if you're not optimizing for search. You're just not. Um, you really need to start with your SEO if you're going to optimize your site. Even if you're testing design, even if you're testing the aesthetics of the site, it's also very important that you get found in the first place and that your site is structured well for people to search through. Um, so you're going to need some kind of basic SEO package to help you do that. So you've got your two basic tools in place, or one if it's all in one. And I will tell you as a quick example of why testing needs to start with SEO because it's what gets people to your site in the first place. Who here doesn't think SEO is important? Um, for instance, you can test meta descriptions and you'll immediately just start getting more traffic on which to test other stuff as well as meet your business goals. This is a quick test that we could run. This is not an actual test that I am running right now, just, just so that you know this is not proprietary data. This is something that is an example of something we did in the past. You start with a basic meta description like EdTrip's web platform for educational travel. And you can see that you're really getting, okay, 8,000 visits, but you're only getting 240 conversions. You change the meta description to something that makes a lot more sense, is more appealing to people, and right there you're getting a little less traffic, but more conversions. So if optimization is meeting the business goals for your site, SEO is the first step in meeting that business goal. And if you're looking at what am I going to test first, what am I going to optimize for, other than the obvious problem that I'm facing, whether I have a problem with site navigation or people failing to buy, so take one step back and first look at your SEO because a lot of the problems that you think are happening further along, happening inside your site, might be based on the kind of traffic you're draw driving through your site. If, for instance, like in this example, you have a really poorly written meta description for your site, Maybe the reason the traffic that's coming to your site isn't converting has nothing to do with the color of the buttons, the text on the page, or how pretty it is. It has to do with the fact that you're getting inappropriate traffic who doesn't know what you're selling. Yes? Two questions. Um, so the words in the meta description, should we also try to put as many of those words in the title of the blog post and within the blog post? And also, what is the exact definition of conversions? So the exact definition of conversions, and I'm glad you asked that, um, I've got a slide on some terminology as well. Um, conversion is any kind of action you want people to take on the page, whether it's to buy, whether it's to simply spend a certain amount of time on the page, or whether it's to sign up for your newsletter. You get to define conversion. Um, the broad definition is whatever action you want your website visitors to take. So for time on a page, what is the decent bounce rate for or is it depending on the niche size? It's completely different depending <coughs> on your site. Um, and I'd be happy to answer some more questions towards the end. But honestly, for instance, if you're at your salon with a two-page site and the first page has your hours of operation, your bounce rate could be 80% and you could still be making money hand over fist because people just want to look up when you're open and where you are. And they could be coming in. On the other hand, if you are the Library of Congress and people are bouncing from your site, you've got a real problem because they're meant to explore the page. Um, so, as far as keywords, again, really use your sense of taste. Um, you don't want to keyword stuff. It's better to mix it up a little bit. I mean, to put the exact same keywords in the description and then the title is nice, but not to the point where it's repetitive or spammy. It's really kind of one of those things where you'll know it when you see it if you want to keep walking. Okay, that's what I do then. Thank you. It's like, it's like appropriateness. You'll know when you see it. Um, so using an SEO tool in WordPress, again, going back to the point that SEO is probably the first place where you should start optimizing no matter what you think your problem actually is. Um, you want to make sure when you set up your SEO tool that it's running like clockwork. It's real, most of them are really simply, I'm using Yoast here as an example. They're all fairly self-explanatory, however. You want to configure your SEO tool right the first time because it's actually going to get a lot done. Remember how we talked about Google Analytics can often answer a lot of problems that you thought needed testing? 
configuring your SEO tool right can also solve a lot of problems that you thought you needed to uh, test or optimize for. For instance, you can create a template that will set up a standard process for writing title and meta descriptions so that if your problem is that your pages aren't getting indexed or they're getting indexed wrong and you're drawing the wrong traffic that's never going to convert, you can set up a process that's going to write the title tags automatically in just about any good quality SEO tool. Again, I'm just using Yoast as an example. I use all in one SEO pack as well with great results. And you can actually solve a lot of problems that will not avoid testing. Um, a lot of things that you can do when you set up a site to begin with are going to avoid problems later on and your SEO plugin is the number one place where a lot of those issues in conversion optimization can be solved. Make sure that it's set up in a way that no matter what post titles people try to write, <coughs> they'll overwrite it in a good quality way if they don't know what they're doing, like you're handing it over to a client you haven't had a chance to train or who hasn't paid for training. Make sure descriptions are optimized. And you'll find often that some of your conversion problems, once you configure your SEO tool correctly, start to go away. So we see again in WordPress SEO, this is how you can optimize each individual page. So once you configure your tool, every time you add a new page, make sure you go in and you <coughs> optimize correctly based on your web analytics. So in other words, if your analytics is showing that certain words are converting very high for you, like for instance, if people click on a paid search ad on the term educational travel for K through 12, Make sure that you then try to incorporate that as a keyword whenever you optimize each individual page. Because again, your, your analytics is now giving you the answer. You don't need to test for it. You've already got the data. It's telling you that certain keywords are already leading you to good, uh, well-optimized traffic. So make sure you do whatever your data is telling you to do. So now you've done everything you can. You've taken it as far as you can with your data. And you're really, really ready to actually test some pages because there's nothing in your data that's actually solved your problems. First of all, go back in your analytics data and make sure that that's actually the case. Are there keywords you haven't optimized for? Is there traffic you're drawing that's just too broad, too short tail, too vague, people who aren't going to buy? Is it really an aesthetic problem with your page? Because I think. You know, what, what I'm trying to get at is, is a lot of people think that they have a problem that testing is going to solve because it's an aesthetic or a text problem with the page, but it's actually a site problem that SEO will solve. But let's say you really, really, truly think that green buttons are the problem with your page, or you know your site, frankly, is a little bit ugly. Now you really do need to go that extra mile and start testing. Um, hunches, what you think works. Again, the data is what tells the real story. So when you start to plan a testing program, make sure you go back into your data and say, these are the missing, missing links. These are the things that our data is pointing at but not giving us a definitive answer for. And that's where you're going to find what you actually need to test to actually get the definitive answer for. Testing is actually so easy that there's no reason not to do it if you can't solve your problems via Google Analytics. But at the same time, it's not so easy that you don't need to involve your design team if you're not a designer, and that you do need to involve your client if you're doing client work. The number one mistake people make with testing is that they just test randomly by making changes without involving a designer and without involving their client. Um, for instance, they'll change. You look very shocked by this. <laughs> but you know, you'll see people just on the fly make a change to a button and or make a change to the text and they'll just say, oh, well, let me, it's just a small tweak, let me just make this tweak. Um, everything that you put out there and you test, please be aware it's not happening in a vacuum, it's actual potentially paying customer traffic that's coming to your site that's going to be subjected to that test page. So even though you might be just messing around with it, your potential customers, your potential investors, the media could actually be exposed to that test page, so make sure it's as good quality as your current site is. Don't just make up tests on the fly without getting your graphic designers involved, making sure that the client is comfortable with it, because it's, at the end of the day, a public-facing part of your website that you're putting out there. So we're 
we're going to take a quick look at, and these slides are going to be available later, of what to test. You can start testing simple things like visuals and text. You can go into more complicated strategic things like calls to action. And then you can even go into really serious heavy duty, my site needs major surgery testing, such as layouts and entire themes. Although I would caution that if you're going to test an entire theme, make sure your site's rare, fairly new. The last thing you want is a site that people, you know, thousands of people are coming to every month. They're used to the design, and you suddenly start randomly showing people a completely new theme, then we're back to the old theme, then we're back to the new theme. Don't do that. Only test the theme if you're really building a new site, but you can test different layouts. How to test is really simple. We've covered a lot of it already. You gather your data, you develop a hypothesis. Okay, we think it's converting poorly because the pictures of cats are really turning people off from a telecom software site. <laughs> Create variations like we covered that are on brand and consistent and not too far afield because people will be seeing it. This is not happening anonymously. And then, then set up your tests. The important thing to remember though is to give it more time than you think. Usually you go into, say, Google Experiments and they'll say give it two weeks. Depending on your volume of traffic, that might be enough, but I would actually, if you're going to make major changes to your site, and it's not just a simple landing page, but actual changes in theme and layout, give it a month or two so you're not making random changes <coughs> or drastic changes based on the statistical flukes. And then, when you think you have the answer, go back and test again. Because, say, you test two different forms of text and one is converting higher. You go put that new text up on your web page. It works for a while. There are still probably ways you can still improve it. The first test and the first optimization don't always necessarily lead to the best result. They're just a better result. So never get complacent and never decide, okay, one test worked. We've got a slight improvement in our traffic and assume that that's as far as you can go you are going to have way more optim optimization opportunities than that first test will provide you with. So once you start testing, keep testing. There's a couple of really great plugins that are available. I'll run through them quickly. Nelio is a really nice one, clean, simple interface. It shows you the results of the test in ways that are very easy for people to understand. WordPress landing page is kind of overwhelms you with a lot of data. But if you like a lot of data, it is the landing page tester for you. And then if you are doing the major surgery, let's test two major themes. SES theme split test integrates with your Google Analytics and gives you some really good information. So in our last 10 minutes, and then I'm going to open it up to some questions, I want to give you a concrete example of how without testing, with just using Google Analytics, we were able to really optimize some of our marketing spend at Edtrips. So Edtrips is a relatively new company. Um, the product launched September 24th, the current version of the product. And it's a platform for organizing educational travel. So field trips, overnight trips for college clubs, and adult education groups as well. And it's a really nice, clean interface. This is a WordPress site with a custom theme. And the target audience um, for this online platform is complex. So our target audiences include teachers, scouting groups, adult ed groups, but also the venues themselves that sell to teachers, adult ed groups, and scouting groups. So it's a complicated area in which to get data and figure out what's working because the question is what's working for who and how. So the example I'm going to show you right now, I only use two free tools. That's it. It costs no money. And that's really important to emphasize is that no matter how much budget you have, no matter how much time you have, there's free tools out there that are easy to use that are going to give you incredible amounts of data that you probably didn't even know you had and really let you optimize not only your site, but stuff you do off-site, like advertising as well. I use Google Analytics and Yoast SEO, which, as we are all probably familiar, doesn't have so much a logo as the face of the inventor all over everything. <laughs> So that's why I put that there. So our goal was simple. This is our app. So here, this is our marketing site, our WordPress site. And if people click on that green button up at the top, they're supposed to be driven to this site, the actual application where you start planning your field trip or your 
um, adult education trip. Our goal, my goal, was to figure out what PR was working. So we had gotten some really good write-ups in educational technology blogs, write-ups in blogs that are teacher to teacher, write-ups in blogs that are just based on the tech industry, as well as we were doing a lot of Facebook and we got some mainstream media coverage as well. And the answer when you have very little um, time or energy to spend on marketing that you're looking for is of all the things that I've been pursuing from a PR standpoint, which actually led people to go do something on the site that's useful to us in terms of becoming a paying customer. Because going back to the earlier question of does a niche publication do us more good than the Boston Globe, if it takes 20 hours of PR time to get written up in the Boston Globe and leads to five paying customers, whereas a mention in an obscure but you know, loyal following teacher's blog gets you 300 paid customers, you're going to forget about the globe really fast. Which referring sources, was the question, led to conversions? In this case, and going back to your question now of what's a conversion, in this case I define a conversion as somebody going to check out the app and starting to create a trip. You can go further and say of those people how many people successfully created a trip, but the first line of conversion was do they even try to set up a field trip in our application? So a lot of this data is actually in your Google Analytics and you don't need to run any tests at all. Because first of all, how are you going to test the Boston Globe or the teacher's blog? You can't. You can't run tests on stuff that happens out of your site and you don't need to with Google Analytics. So in addition to sparing you the work of running a test on things where you can get the answers, it will also make you able to test things where any other form of testing is not feasible. So you see here, this was our referring traffic for a short space of time. Some of it was our mailing list and some of it were places where we had gotten written up. You can see right here the sheer volume of the traffic that we're getting from places like, say, Edudemic versus industry blogs is telling us a little bit about what good they're doing us in terms of sheer number of eyeballs to the site. So if your question is simply how many people become aware of our cause or aware of our product, you can go just this far and get the answers already without running a test. But here's where it's exciting. Because if you go a little to the right of all of this useful data, you can set up goals and conversions in Google Analytics where you can actually find out how many people coming from your different referring sources are actually taking an action that you want them to take, in our case, trying out the app. And I had blocked this out because this is an ongoing business thing and I'd rather not put it up on YouTube. But to give you a sense, you can see that, say, somebody who came in through Facebook is more likely to come to the app and sign up to use the app than somebody who came from Boston Globe. You write then no from that data that you are better off spending your time and limited energy as a one-person marketing or web development shop doing social media marketing than doing PR to the mainstream media. That answers the question and then from there you can make a lot of different decisions and extrapolations once you set up your goals and conversions. And your goals. So where to pitch your story? What topics are of interest to real buying customers? Because you can go into those referrals and see what article they read about you that got them to sign up for your application. Did someone talk about how affordable your app is? How easy to use it is? Which message that's out there in the world that you're putting out there as PR or advertising is drawing the kind of people to your site that you want coming to your site, the people who become your customers? You can see whether certain blogs have a loyal following that turns into your loyal following and maybe it's worth it to you once you have some budget to advertise there. And at the end of the day, it will also tell you what the customers really want because if there are two articles out there in teacher blogs, one saying that your app is really easy to use and the other one just saying that travel is great and it's the travel is great article that gets people to click through and sign up, then maybe your message needs to center around travel. So, Google Analytics will tell you all of this without running a single test. And if you do want to run tests, for instance, on whether usability versus the attractiveness of travel are mes the better messages that resonate with your audience, it'll point you in the direction and give you the data that gives you the information of what to test 
they'll tell you, these are two messages that are out there, one of which seems to work better than the other. You should test that kind of messaging on your site. Google Analytics has all of these answers deep, deep in its depths. And you know what? None of it's on this screen. This is the screen most of us spend most of our time in Google Analytics staring at. Oh, look, my bounce rate, my visitors, and it's really exciting and sexy numbers, but they're also called vanity numbers for a reason. They only tell you sheer aggregate number of people turning up, taking a look, and deciding to stay. That's good news, interesting news. It's nice to see it trend up, but it doesn't actually tell you anything news. Yes? Would it also tell you if you got visitors after they saw your article on, let's say, stumble upon or did? Mm -hmm. Yes. It'll tell you your social media referrals, too. Which is great, because if you wonder, is anybody paying attention to the stuff I did, It'll answer that too. So the thing is, don't stay here. Don't stay on this screen, whatever you do. The minute you log into your Google Analytics, get away from this screen. <laughs> Flee. Go here. Go look at any of that data, your referrals. <coughs> look at your visitor behavior. Look at if you're thinking about, do I need to really finally get into responsive design? And honestly, I can tell you the answer to that is yes, please, now. But if you're still on the fence or you need to convince somebody else, go into the devices that people are using and see how many people are visiting your website from an iPad. You may find, with Etrips, for instance, we found that relatively few people who become converting customers are mobile customers. Because let's face it, if I'm a teacher or I'm a senior center man, program manager, and I'm running a trip to Florence, I'm not doing that on my phone in line at the phone. You know, honestly, from a point of view of our users, although someone might check out the application on a mobile device, they're not going to actually use it on a mobile device. So it can answer huge things about responsiveness for you as well. It's really easy to set up goals. Um, you can just go into your admin panel, set it up. It's literally a two-second process. There's videos on it that will show you. But please do so, because it will tell you so much. And then just to summarize, if you aren't ready to go into that much detail, go at least into your Google Analytics channels. If you're trying to figure out what of your marketing or your efforts to drive traffic work, channels is a wonderful new feature that I just have to talk about to sum up. It'll tell you, just at a glance, which referral source, whether it's links on other people's sites, organic search, social media, or your email marketing is actually getting you the most traffic and of those which are competing goals. So if you have no time at all to do anything, if you literally are just rushed off your feet and you've done six shows in four days or whatever, but you need to get some data quickly, go into your channels and you'll probably be able to answer a lot of your questions. Five minutes. Okay. So here's some interesting information on implementing <coughs> that summarizes everything. Avoid plug-in overload. <coughs> Focus on actionable data, don't look at the vanity numbers, look at the things that will actually help you optimize your site. Test only when you already have something to test, some data. Oh, is travel more attractive or is usability more attractive? It looks like we have some information that we need to verify. And then sometimes, actually very often, you really only need analytics to optimize. Sometimes you need to make some a little testing, but always run lean. Don't get test happy. And more importantly, have fun. Um, I'm going to open it up to a few quick questions right now, and I'm also available via email um, or on my blog where I'll stick around a little bit afterwards if you have any more questions. But we do have time for three quick questions before the question. I just have one quick an announcement to make uh, before the questions. Um, bring your badges for snack time. Uh, we have another outside group that's not associated with us, so we want to make sure that you get your snack for people mooch. And, this <laughs> <laughs> and second, thank this next snack sponsor, which is North Point Digital. It's not upstatement. Um, visit their booth and feel free to talk to them. Are there Thanks. vegan snacks? No, no I asked. Vegan no. no. But next year. Next year? Okay. All right. Sorry. All right. Okay. I know you have a question. I read that Google Analytics is taking away showing you their your keyword refers. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know any alternatives right. where you get that information? Paid search. It's really unfortunate, but um, part of it's privacy laws, or no, so they no. say. Um, the only <coughs> way you're now going to find out what keywords are converting for you is to run a bunch of very small, cheap keyword campaigns. 
in um, paid search and just see which ones are those. You basically you're gonna have to pay for the traffic, even if you spend 20 bucks. If you want to learn about vegan sites for your travels, here's my blog. Oh, vegan travels. <laughs> vegan travels. Okay. Thank you. And that was great marketing, by the way. Yes. Jessica. I actually just wanted to add uh, webmaster tools. So if your site is hooked up to webmaster tools, you can get that keyword data. It's just not as easy. It's not going to be as yeah, not going to be as robust. But you can get some. It's just not. A, Yes. It do, I have found consistently that it works, not just in SEO, but in social media. If you capitalize every word, people, for some reason, are often 40% more likely to click. It depends on the context, but I've run test after test, and it's just amazing how much more likely people are to click when you capitalize your words. So I default to doing that. So yeah, that was deliberate. I'm not sure I need that. I just want to say okay. is that we have a large multi-site instance, and we did use Yoast, yep. and it managed to severely impact our performance because at time of activation, yeah. Yoast calls everything. Mm -hmm. We have around 1,500 sites on a, on a multi-user instance, yeah, and it just not, crippled it. So it's not work Yoast that. was only in our experience for smaller Yeah, if sites. it's a small site, it's, it's a really, really robust plugin. So just you know, be aware of that. That on a multi-site, it's going to be it's it's going to be a problem. If it's on one site, your site's not really big. It gives you a lot of bells and whistles. Um, there are lighter ones though. I mean, I, I found all in one. Yeah, we ended up building our own. Home, yeah. So. Uh, well, if you're doing a multi-site, you might end up going. That's for sure. One more question. Oh yes. and energy you have. Um, I have, and it depends on what you're optimizing for. I think most people are challenged enough just to get the metadata going. But I'd be happy to, we're three minutes over, but I'd be happy to talk to you about it later on. All right, I guess we're done.